Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you another game between Liquid Snoot and Nara. Here, oh my gosh, uh, forgot the name of the map. My apologies. Feeling a little bit under the weather today. I don't know if I'm actually coming down with the flu or anything, but apparently, grats for ESET Snoot saying thank you, as we are going to be opening up in this Protoss versus Zerg matchup. Now, Protoss versus Zerg, perhaps um, one of the most common matchups that I that I cast on my channel, and it, we should be looking into perhaps a Forge fast expansion, as always. Meanwhile, Liquid Snoot um, should either be going for either a 15 hatchery or a 15 spawning pool. It looks as though Nara is actually spawning in the or scouting in the wrong direction. It will take him quite some time to find his opponent. Meanwhile, Snoot will find his opponent rather quickly and also figure out what the strategy, what that particular strategy will be. All right, traveling through space on this space station, um, playing StarCraft at near the speed of light. Otherwise, how can those ships or all those stars move by so fast? Anyways, let's take a look. Pylon now is in position. We can see a spawning pool already placed down. So Nara opening up spawning pool first instead of opening up Excuse me, instead of opening up with a hatchery first. And let's take a look. It looks like Nara is actually going to be opening up with the Nexus first. Let's it's going to be a little bit of time. The Overlord is going to be in position here. It is going to spot that pylon. And once it spots that pylon, is it going to back away? No, it is actually revealing himself to his opponent. And now looking for the Nexus, doesn't see anything. And Nara pretty much has to place this Nexus right under the nose of Snoot. All right, Hatchery now coming in as well. Zerglings will be coming down from Nara. Most likely four Zerglings in addition to a Queen. And what will that follow-up play going to be? No, it looks like Snoot is actually just going to continue to drone. Even though the front door is completely wide open, I believe Snoot just thinks to himself, you know what, there is not that much damage I can do with a whole bunch of Zerglings. Let me go for more drones early on, and perhaps that will give me enough of an economic advantage as I, as I want to definitely surpass you in terms of workers. Photon Cannon now being added, Overlord moving relatively slowly and will be able to get back up onto this high ground here all right photon cannon down and this front door will pretty much be sealed up rather tight as we are now seeing a third base coming in from snoot now this third base is a little bit difficult for most zerg players to try and defend however because of the way the map has been laid out or has spawned all Liquid Snoot needs to do is defend this choke point here. Now I say choke point relatively loosely. This is a very wide open area. But once a couple buildings are placed down, say evolution chambers for later for viper consumption, or maybe a spine crawler or two, Zerg players can have the ability to shut down a lot of the walkways pretty quickly. Now, both of these players don't have a very large army, so I am expecting an engagement sometime around, um, I would say around the 10 minute mark. Um, both of these players are just, are not even really teching that heavily. You can see that Snoot is only on minerals. He doesn't have any gas whatsoever, and he is just trying to play and stretch out this early, early economic advantage as much as he can. 29 drones versus 28 probes. Five more drones now being trained, and Snoot doesn't show any sign of slowing down with all of his drones. You can see another 10 drones were just trained there. Now five, as we now see a 34 to 30 probe advantage. Drones over probes, and what is this probe going to be doing next? The Zerglings. Oh, is the Zerglings going to try to catch up to the probe? Yes, it is going to try. Nope. Decides to let it go. And we are now going into additional queens. So far, we are on two queens on three bases. And I'm curious as to why this base doesn't have a queen at this point. All right, the Zerglings are now backing off. More Zerglings are being added. And is Snoop going to have enough units in time? That is the key, 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 key factor here you can see more queens are being added we need to lay down some creep tumors as well 
the Stalker Zealot army push, this is not that threatening, but because Snoot had gone for so many drones and not that many queens, he's actually in a little bit of a strange situation. Zealots now perhaps going to get surrounded. Yes, they are going to get surrounded there. Zealots now trying to pull away. Queens cannot force, um, cannot engage here on that time warp, especially if there is no creep. They end up moving ridiculously slow as Snoot sitting at 70 over 70. I'm dodging a bit of a bullet there. Nara does not have any real uh, backup for um, any sort of any sort of pressure, and it looks like Snoot is gonna go unchallenged on this third base. Are we getting extractors finally? Yes, we do have extractors here and here. So, are we gonna get that metabolic boost? Yes, we are, and we are gonna be going into some roaches. Snoot is going to have the supply advantage for quite some time. The question is whether or not Nara will be able to get the tech advantage and with the tech advantage perhaps come out ahead in any sort of engagement. 13 workers here, 18 workers down here. Immortals are being added. This looks like a two base immortal all in now. After a rather strange opening, worker production has come to a halt. So yes, this is a two base all-in. Perhaps one probe should be transferred down to the um, low ground here in order to maximize harvesting efficiency. Let's see, level one weapons upgrade now coming in. Are we going to get up another immortal? Not quite sure why we are not since there is so much uh, minerals and gas that Nara is currently sitting on. Zerglings now positioning themselves, perhaps trying to go for a bit of a flank. What will be happening here as the creep tumors have been laid down? All right, Sentry Immortals. Only two Immortals, a third one now being added. We are getting in additional gateways. That is a lot of gateways. And the timing on this attack does appear to be a two-base Immortal Sentry all in. Overseer is going to fly by. It is going to catch pretty much sight of all of this. And what is going to be happening next? The one changeling still sitting in position here, getting off a lot of scouting information. And we are going to see perhaps the sentries and the mortals now making a bit of a push. Zergling is going to get a good surround. No force field as the Zerglings are not going to be able to deal that much damage. All right, more units now trying to come in. And Nara wasting or using a lot of force fields to protect himself. He needed to do so. But now all of these sentries are pretty much out of energy. He's not going to be able to do another round of force fields. And this just goes to show you, because of how wide open this, um, this engagement area is, Nara was unable to use maybe three or four force fields, had to use six in order to protect his units. Now let's come down. Swarm hosts are being added. This is more of a defensive posture as the swarm hosts, do they have enduring locusts? No, not yet. More swarm hosts being added as well. And the swarm hosts, are they going to just start trading damage? You can see a little bit of damage being dealt here. Double pylon now going to get canceled as this one poor probe. Oh, the zerglings all caught right there. And that is a horrible place for a zergling to be. All of them going to get taken down at the cost of two force fields. Very good trade there. But now we start seeing the locust at locust movement making their way across. All right, let's see all of these locusts now. Where will they be traveling to next? Snoot now expanding onto a fourth base. If he's able to hold off this two base all in, he's going to come out of it smelling like roses. As he will have a superior economy, superior production, and be able to replenish his units much more quickly. So far though, Nara sitting at over almost 2,000 resources inside his banks. He needs to just constantly warp in units and Nara just constantly getting supply block. This is not what I was expecting from a player of this caliber as we now see all of these swarm hosts getting taken or all of these locusts getting taken down. Swarm hosts still not in danger of anything as we now see the engagement coming in. Do we see perhaps an observer nearby? I don't see any observers at all as the zealots are trying to engage and what is Nara gonna see? A whole bunch of locusts now spawning out. This is not the engagement that he wants to do. The locusts do move fairly fast on creep and there you have it the mothership core trying to fight this all back all so many locusts you can see how much damage is being dealt as the immortal now forced to retreat again zerglings making their way back over i'm still surprised that we don't see enduring locusts being researched when you have this many swarm hosts on the field 10 swarm hosts on the field snoot with a 50 supply advantage and 
Now you see Snoot going into Vipers. Viper is able to pluck those units and pull them back. Immortals will get taken down. And now you see the Swarm Host with that slow encroachment across. This is continually going to be a problem as Nara going to lose his forward pylon. And now needs, absolutely needs Colossi with extended thermal lance range to even engage and fight all of these units here. All right, Swarm Host, 160 hit points. What are they going to be doing next? Nexus down here, Nexus off over here. Nara not increasing his pro production at all as he is still running on two bases. Twilight Council now being added and perhaps we will see level 2 weapons upgrade coming in momentarily. Zerglings, Locust at 2-0 upgrades dealing so much damage and really not uh, taking that much damage at all. All of these swarm hosts are still here as we now finally see Enduring Locust being... Um, being utilized or being researched so far extractor is taking a bit of damage you can see a bit of a a bit of consumption on the infestation pit as well i do not assume that snoot is going to consume them to death he just wants to get up to maximum energy on these locusts and then start plucking key key units away from the battle all right here we go mothership core is in position there is a time warp perfect perfect stop in order to slow down all of those locusts and there you go all of them were taken down there but they will be replenished in just a second what's happening next zerglings vipers locusts once that swore what's that uh, evolving lo what enduring locusts oh zerglings having their way with colossi as the colossi are getting plucked really really close however no double pluck here and what is this Nara actually doing a good job in that fight there and he also has he also has uh, hallucinated colossi that is an important um, distinction hallucinated colossi um if the vipers start plucking them that is not gonna be a good call at all um the it is gonna be wasting energy wasting micro and all of this all this is doing is that snoot is um snoot is gonna be wasting time focus firing on units that are not real units let's see what's gonna be happening next is there an observer i still do not see one colossi four real colossi uh only no more hallucinated colossi sentries now pulling away the enduring locusts are now on the field as we now see a fifth base being taken by snoot zergling's doing an easy run by around the far side of the map this nexus will fall and i believe snoot will end up taking this game relatively easily no real engagement in this battle both of the sides just playing a rather slow let me macro up to 200 200 supply and then engage as opposed to the early trickery that we see in some of the higher level korean games snoot now coming in locust now making their way over are they gonna are, is it gonna deal a lot of damage swarm host now looking to back away and we are gonna see a little bit of time life there as the swarm hosts are gonna be rerouting themselves all right creep tumor is now getting taken down Spore Crawler, um, unable to attack or deal any damage here. We can see some more of this uh, attack A moving army. Snoot losing a lot of swarm hosts here. This is not what he wants to see. Guardian Shield preventing a lot of damage, but there is a whole bunch of plucks as the Colossi now backing away. That Colossi gets taken down, but it was just a hallucination. And what is happening next? Nara coming out on top, and oh my goodness, Snoot, even though he had the superior supply count, I believe the hallucinated Colossi was the problem, and... He, GG's, Snoot loses the game after being ahead throughout so much of the matchup. And Nara just picking and choosing his fights absolutely perfectly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. I will make a note that Snoot is sitting on 6,000 resources. And 6,000 resources is about what is needed in order to get back into the game. But the production time would simply be too much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.